Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today, on December 15th of 2020, Nintendo dropped a new Indie World Showcase. And basically, the showcase gave us a first glimpse into some of the big indie games that are coming, and even some that are releasing right away today and in the beginning of 2021. Now, although the showcase, I wouldn't say was packed with huge releases, it, there was at least three really solid announcements in this, and I would say one really big one at the end. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all the announcements that were made. I will be cutting out some sections of the indie world once we're done talking about the game, but you'll pretty much get the gist of all the games that were announced and what they're all about. Now, as usual, if you do like the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now, the first announcement we got was that the Spelunky series, both Spelunky 1 and 2, were coming to the Nintendo Switch. And I think a lot of people missed just how big this series is. Basically, it's already been released for pretty much every other platform, and it is very critically acclaimed. They are excellent roguelike platformers, and honestly, if you like either platformers or roguelike games, this series should definitely be on your radar. Now, the only sort of disappointing part of the announcement is that it's only going to be coming out mid-2021, which means that although it's a huge announcement and it's exciting, we're actually not going to be getting the games for quite a while. Now, the next game in the showcase, I would say, was the weirdest game announced. It is Flisty Fluffs. Flisty Fluffs is a party brawler, but you are playing all different cats that basically go into brawling matches. And if you look at this game, it just looks insane as a concept. But at the same time, I have this impression that it's going to be good and it's going to actually work quite well as a party game. I don't expect this to become a competitive game or any kind of serious brawler, but as a really, really decent party game, I would be on the lookout for Fisty Fluffs if that is the kind of game you're looking for. Now, next in the showcase was another party game, Very, Very Valet. And look, once again, it's a party game, but I'm Gary getting serious overcooked vibes from this one. So it looks like one of those games where you really have to work as a team to park the cars and basically hit a target score. Uh, I can see this being a great party game. However, as overcooked, you know, if you are playing with people that have tempers or that are very competitive, the matches can get quite heated if you have someone that sort of isn't pulling their weight. But at the same time, it looks like a really interesting game. And all will depend really on basically how much this game is going to be sold for. And once again, as in Flisty Fluffs, the only disappointing thing is that they're only saying early 2021. So we don't really know when exactly that means. Does it mean that we're going to get it in January or are we going to get it more in April or May? Now, the next announcement we got in the showcase is Tunche, which might be, in my opinion, the biggest sleeper hit of the whole showcase. It is basically a beat-em-up action game, but with beautifully hand-drawn uh, aesthetics. And basically, it's set as you're trying to save the rainforest set in basically South America. It's made by South American developers, so you can really see that they're in love with the concept. And basically, all will depend on the gameplay. If they can put together some really solid, fun gameplay, this game, like I said, might be the sleeper hit of the whole showcase. Now, next, we probably got my personal biggest announcement of the whole showcase, which was Cyber Shadow. Now, this is an awesome game that is made by the same developers as made the Shovel Knight series. And what they did with basically the basis of a Mega Man series and they twisted it into their own thing with Shovel Knight, now they seem to have done with the Ninja Gaiden series and the Ninja Gaiden series from the old NES. And honestly, I've been looking for an awesome game like this and it seems to be done once again with such love and care. And if there's one thing we can trust from Yacht Club is that they generally honor the franchises which sort of brought their own IPs to life. And if they are anywhere as close to as much care as they put into Shovel Knight, this is probably going to be a huge, huge hit for indie gaming in 2021. Now, the next game that they announced was actually Calico. And this game was actually launched right away. It's already available on the eShop. And basically, it's another cat-based game, but this time you're running a cat cafe. 
Honestly, it looks very close to going after the same type of audience as Animal Crossing. I personally liked Animal Crossing, but I eventually moved on. So I'm not probably going to pick up this game because I'm not a cr you know crazy into this style of gaming. But if you loved Animal Crossing and you want a different experience, this seems like a pretty decent one to invest in. Now the next game we got, once again, doesn't speak too much to me personally, but it's Alba A Wildlife Adventure. Basically it seems to be an environmentally themed game where basically you have to save the environment on a uh, island, you have to get the villagers involved, you have to get them to help you, you have to clean up the island, you have to save animals. Look, it looks like an awesome exploration slash laid back game, but I personally will probably be skipping on this one, but if you're into that type of laid back adventure game, I think this is going to be a definite one that you're also going to want to keep on your radar because it does look like it's made with quite a high level of production. Now the next game on the showcase was actually another really weird one. It's called Nosia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now it really looks like it's based on the Among Us concept where basically, but this time you're dropped with AI characters and you sort of have to figure out who's the bad guys and who are the good guys. But at the same time, it seems to be really done in a far out anime style and a really weird one as well. Personally, once again, not a game I'm super excited about, but I will keep an eye on it because it could turn out to be another, you know, odd hit. Now, while we're on the concept of weird games, the next one, which is called Happy Game, which by the way is a sarcastic title, seems like another really weird one, but this one I might actually try out because it's basically a puzzle solving game where you're playing, you have to solve the puzzle to basically defeat the character's nightmares. So the Happy Game uh, title is really a sarcastic one, but at the same time, I love puzzle solving and the graphical design this time seems more up my alley. So I actually might try this one out and see uh, you know, what it has going for it. The only downside is it's announced only for spring 2021. So hopefully we're gonna get it pretty early in the spring, but uh, then again, it's not a definite timeline. Now the next game that was announced was actually one of the biggest ones in the announcement and that is Super Meat Boy Forever which is basically the follow up to Super Meat Boy and basically this is going to be a console exclusive probably meaning it's going to be releasing on PC as well but console wise it will be only releasing for the Nintendo Switch at least as probably a limited time exclusive. Now if you've never played Super Meat Boy it's a extremely difficult platformer and it's really based on being very specific with your mechanics. Now what's awesome too about Super Meat Boy is it's actually coming out before 2021. As you see on screen right now, the delivery date is December 23rd. And this is a game that a lot of people have been waiting for and this is definitely one of the biggest announcements. Super Meat Boy is definitely a game I'm gonna be trying out, however, in my opinion, it's not really a question of whether it's going to be good or not. It's going to be a question of how frustrating it's going to be and if I'm going to actually manage to play it long enough to finish it. Now the next game actually is already released on the eShop as well and it is Grindstone. Now this seems like a puzzle solving game but with RPG elements mixed in. It actually looks pretty fun. The only thing is that it launched a little more expensive than I thought it was. Uh, I believe it launched for $20 and it's on sale for 25% off for $15. But even at that price, I would have seen this probably more along the lines of a $10 game. Uh, at the same time though, if it is really fun, if I have time, I'll be checking it out. But as you're going to see, there's a lot of other games coming that basically I will probably prioritize before this one. But Grindstone, if you like puzzle games, it seems like a really decent one. Now next we got a short sizzle reel. Now I'm going to launch it and we're going to watch through the whole sizzle reel. But basically they announced about five or six games really quickly. Of course, we don't have too much information because it's a really quick sizzle reel. But at the same time, I would say there's two or three standouts out of this one. This first one, when the past comes around, doesn't really speak to me too much. Uh, however, uh, Cosmocrats seems like a okay puzzle solver. But once again, probably not one of the ones I'm going to be looking out for the most. This one, however, Hoa does seem interesting. It seems like a really, really interesting platformer with a really interesting visual style. So that one got me excited. Hazel Sky as well. I actually found 
odd that they didn't put more time on this maybe because the game is far from being complete but hazel sky i would keep an eye out for and lastly trash sailors looks like it could be interesting it looks like a party game but set on like this ship that's traveling across the desert and then lastly we got this like little jrpg looking game so basically out of these two i would say hoa and uh, hazel sky look like the standouts but basically the sizzle reel you know doesn't give us too much information so we don't have too much to go on so now we come to the big huge announcement of the whole showcase and that is the fact that among us is coming to the nintendo switch and honestly i don't know how it took this long for it to come to the switch because it seems like a game that was actually made for the switch and honestly with everything happening in the world this year a game like among us is, was obviously going to become a breakout hit because it just brings people together. It's an awesome party style game, but you can also play with people that you don't know, where basically you have to figure out who is, who is, or sometimes there can be many imposters. The imposters basically try to sabotage the ship while everyone else is trying to fix it. And the hugest, hugest surprise we got is that Among Us is launched actually today right now you can actually buy it it's only five dollars on the eShop, and if you haven't tried among us yet it's a great experience it's better if you have people to play with but even if you don't i would say try it out it's a great laid-back game to waste a few hours on so that is pretty much it for what's probably going to be the last indie world showcase of 2020 and like I said, it wasn't jam-packed with huge games, but in my opinion, nonetheless, there were three really solid games announced. Obviously, there was Among Us, which was one of the hugest hits of the year. After that, Super Meat Boy Forever as a console exclusive is a great news for Switch gaming. And lastly, what in my, basically, opinion, Cyber Shadow, to me, is a game that I am looking forward to. I just can't wait to play this game. I loved Ninja Gaiden back on the old NES and a polished, brought up to standards version is a game that I'm really looking forward to. So I think that's pretty much it for today's video. Now don't forget, as I said earlier, if you do like this kind of content and you wanna see more, please hit the like button, helps out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I see all of you in my next video.